Lam. Can you talk a little bit about Darwin's theory of evolution and its contribution to postmodern secular humanism and from this the birth of ethics-based societies two-dimensional as Muslims what are the effective arguments against such societies well this is hugely complicated isn't it and I don't think I should get into it in great detail but how about the idea that the modern world is based on a kind of fundamentalism namely that if we take fundamentalism to denote the desire to bypass an intervening era of decline and to go back to a golden age of naturalness and normality, then we can say that the hard neo-Darwinian vision of the human condition, as expounded by the likes of Richard Dawkins, is also a sort of fundamentalism, because they are saying that the intervening human, religious, or civilizational images of human beings as being something that is made in the image of God, something higher, something with a, a final destiny, and getting back to uh, our biological nature, our simian nature, that is a fundamentalism. And if that is their agenda, if our true nature is driven by the selfish gene, if that is ultimately the principle which drives all human action, then how can one have an ethics-based society? It's very far from clear how one can, on the one hand, assert that an absolute, blind, robotic selfishness dictates everything that human beings can be and have become. And on the other hand, to say that we need a society in which laws and ethics and relationships are based on principles of mutuality and sharing. It's not easy to see how those two can be squared. So what I would say is that humanism is in fact not possible outside a religious context. We tend to assume humanism is the opposite of religion or the rival to religion. But in fact, if we mean by humanism a valorizing of the higher ethical possibilities of the human condition, a true regard for our humanity and for being humane, then clearly the religions, I suppose all of the religions, are a better basis for a humanism than the rather crude, unpleasant image of an essentially simian human nature that is proposed by Dawkins and his followers. So what we do with regard to this question is postmodern secular humanism isn't humanism. Call it postmodern secularity, but please don't call it humanism because you believe ultimately in, in monkeys. You don't really believe in human beings in terms of the great expressions of humanity, the great culture, the great architecture, the great everything that has made us categorically different from the monkeys, you no longer believe in that. So humanism is for the religious, it's not for the secular. That would be one way of tackling it. Can you comment on what the Muslim response should be to postmodern critical theories of ideology, language, and postcolonialism? Are we to reject them outright or attempt to reconcile Islam with their reworkings of the meta-narrative of civilized life? General question regarding the theories of Derrida, Zizek, and Babha. Please take it any direction you see fit. I think the big question that we need to get our minds around in the current intellectual climate is how we can simultaneously take advantage of the postmodern deconstruction of the Enlightenment meta-narrative, which was the meta-narrative that thought that it had pulled the rug from beneath religious truth claims, but at the same time resist postmodernism's demand that our meta-narrative be analogously deconstructed. Can we get away with that? Uh, I think the response to that has to be to look at the different sorts of postmodern theory that are now being propounded, and particularly the newer generation. Derrida to some extent, but somebody like Irigaray particularly, and Irigaray's reception of Lacan, and Irigaray's definition of the spiritual which is also shared with other uh, postmodern thinkers, such as um, Emmanuel Levinas, most obviously. The idea that the postmodern method actually enables a valorizing of the human sense of knowing in terms of the intuiting of the presence of a radical other against which we experience our own relationality. And that's very important to the sort of attempt to revive. Jewish theology that you sort of get with 
with Levinas that I think could be promising in the context of well, Islam as another Semitic religion that historically has also cultivated the idea of a very absolute divine otherness. The other way forward might be to look at somebody like John Milbank in his book, The Word Made Strange, and to some extent his book, Theology and Social Theory, where he uses Derrida in particular, first of all, to unpick the traditional Enlightenment anti-religious meta-narrative, and particularly having a go at, at Kant, but says that there can be a way out of the reflexive trap that post-modernity puts us in if you have a doctrine of revelation. And in his case, that basically expresses itself through a Eucharistic theology. He thinks that the Eucharist is the unique fount of meaning in a world that ultimately is only mutually referential. And in our case, I think we could probably make an even stronger case uh, because the Eucharist as the mediator of a logos is notoriously ambiguous. Historically, it's produced so many different rival Christian narratives because it's non-discursive. And this is presumably why this question came because of the point I was making the day before yesterday about the word made word. In our case, if we are proposing a revelation that is literally logocentric, that is to say the manifestation of the divine is textual, is a book, then that enables you to break out of the trap, the circularity that uh, postmodernism otherwise puts us in. That's Rorty's skyhook through which we hoist ourselves out of the, the sea of questions which postmodernism has placed us in. I think generally we need to be optimistic about the receptivity of the current intellectual climate to the claims of Islam as long as those claims are made by people who really know the tradition well and also know the current intellectual debates. I think generally theology is in a much stronger position than it was, say, 50 years ago, when a certain hard positivism made serious traditional theology wither on the vine. Anyway, I'll stop at that point. Jazakum Allah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.